Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and if you're new to the channel or if you're already a subscriber and if you know me or if you don't know me, you know that I learned so many tech stacks in my freshman year. I'm in my fourth year right now as of June 2022, I'm looking forward to graduating and by the time I was in my, like I finished my first year, I learned about like C, C++, Python, Java, web development, um, some Java development like uh, Maven, Gradle and all these other things, Spring Boot and things like that. I also learned machine learning and uh, also DevOps, contributed to GSOC in my Google Summer of Code in my first year in the field of Kubernetes. I also learned about mobile development, you know, front and back end stuff as well, uh, networking, system design, so basically everything. Um, it's it's not just that, you know, um, <laughs> so I mean, the question I get is how, kind of how were you able to do this? And I think people ask me this question mainly because I'm able to represent that okay yeah i in fact did learn about all these things i taught machine learning i started teaching machine learning in boot camps programming boot camps in my city things like that data structures algorithms everyone knows my open source contributions um you can find on github and everything so obviously there's proof like uh, this guy's no this guy knows what he's talking about the real question people ask me is how did you do it i don't think there's anything um you know different or uh, it's just about perspective, right? So in, in this video, I'll try to break it down to explain to you how I learned various tech stacks and how I usually like learn and things like that. Yeah. So starting with, let me, let me recall, it's been a while. I was in my first year. So the number one thing is obviously time management. And when I was in my first year, I was actually attending college also a little bit. So I, I remember that in my college, uh, I... Uh, in first year, you don't have computer science subjects. You have like physics and metallurgy for some reason and things like that. So I was actually running, uh, reading computer science books and not just, I think not just reading for the sake of it, not just learning for the sake of it, but learning because you have passion. You're interested in learning more about it. How do computers work? What happens when you start a computer? Um, how operating systems work? What is What are compilers and things like that? So not like, oh, this thing, I'm reading this thing right now, I should remember this. It will come, it will be helpful in the future. Not like that. Just reading it like a story. Or having fun, basically is what I'm saying. So I always followed this approach of having fun. And um, I think when you are passionate about something, it does not seem like a much of a trouble, right? So if someone asks me to, you know, study about uh, the hu human anatomy, anatomy like... Um, you know, like biology and be a doctor. I would not be able to do that because I have I have no interest. I don't like memorizing stuff and, um, you know. So I think it all boils down to interest and time management. So speaking more about it, you, you need some items, you need some action items from this video. Otherwise you'll say Kunal is making, you know, uh, I, we don't, we don't, we did not get, get any action items. So from a timetable and uh, the, the way I used to do things were that I picked up a topic and then I listed down the roadmap for that topic and then I just started just googling individual things. So many people struggle with this uh, approach because they like, struggle with the approach of finding the right roadmap and I think that you can find on just like a simple Google search. The, the way I did it was a mix of Google and reaching out to people in the open source community. Reaching out to them. If I want a web development roadmap, I'll Google it. And then I'll obviously reach out to some people who are already doing web development. There should be proof that this person does web development. There are many videos on YouTube that say web development roadmap. These people themselves have never done web development. They will Google about web development and the first post that will come, they will just read that post and make a video out of it. So I'll, I'll always made sure that the roadmap that I'm following are for, is from people who are legit. So once you have the roadmap, you don't need a structured course as such, whatever. You can individually Google topics and learn about it individually and apply those somewhere. Same thing I did with like mostly with development. I think that's the case. Development, ML, um, mobile development, web development, so many other things. So you don't have to find the best resource. People ask me, well, where is the best resource? You don't need that. You know, just just get started. Just do something, you know. Um, in the end, the resources don't help that much until and unless you are willing to self-study. So when people ask, Kunal, will this course be able to get me into this company? That's a that's a bad question. 
no course is designed to get you in a company you you will get into one any company according to your own skill sets the real question should be will this course help me in clearing the interviews yes for example my dsa course will help you clearing the interviews of fang getting that interview and all these things a lot of things go behind that your profile your you have to apply get a referral and so many other things so anyone you know people say placement courses do this course 100 percent placement no this is just click baits something it doesn't happen in real life okay so that's another point don't look for the best roadmap just you know find a roadmap and start googling topics random and apply whatever you're learning so make projects and contribute to open source and things like that the way i structured i can make another video on this it will be a good one my timetable so um i i actually devoted some time so when i was in my first year i was like first i'll do data structures algorithms i spent three months doing dsa and then i started and once i was done with the fundamentals and everything i kept on doing data structures algorithms till i got a job every morning two three hours i would do lead code that's it rest of my entire day i would spend doing development so even in college when i was attending lectures or whatever i was doing development and my laptop and just reading books and things like that um is what i was doing um so yeah for, first i started with dsa three months passed by and then like uh started with the uh, with the web development then some mobile development machine learning devops system design side by side i did three 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 two two months three three months things like that and i kept applying my knowledge into that one important thing i like to mention over here is in first year don't try to be an expert first year is the year for expl exploration so when i was learning about web dev ml devops and all these other things i was not being an expert in these things i was just trying out seeing what all these things are about and applying my skills making some projects contributing to open source by far so, so far you may have you may know that contributing to open source you don't have to be an expert okay, you can start even today so not to be an expert in any field in order to contribute to open source that's what i did i learned on the go i got selected in goals of code contributed over there and then when i came to like by second year end or third year then i started doing deep dive and trying to be an expert if you will still not an expert but i'm getting there <laughs> um in in the fields which i'm interested in so that's when i realized like okay i don't like mobile development so then i did not do mobile development okay i left it in my first year um so i think that's which is basically about it what, what most folks you know do is they try to be experts right in their first year no one expects you to be an expert especially as an intern no one expects to expects you to be an expert even big tech companies they they expect you to have an open mind and explore and you know build things and just be be like be enthusiastic about things you know um apart from that yeah i think i think that's pretty much about it pretty straightforward stuff i've studied a lot uh, applied those knowledge uh, actively in projects and things like that i did dsa every morning so i was always interview ready i made a video on this already how you can prepare for lead code interviews uh, uh, and things like that mm, that's pretty much about it also also i made sure that in my first year i was not wasting any time like doing computer programming or things like that i uh, i i did uh, did not waste time in these things uh, in order to get a job i think you only should do it if you are interested in doing the sport and not for getting uh, clearing interviews um apart from that like um what what are the ways to people waste time in freshman year <laughs> you all know it so i did not do that um i did i did hang out with my friends i did go out i had fun but i think mostly i was um, focused around making the most out of my first year i, I know many people who also spend their first year in trying to upgrade their branch to a computer science branch i can make another video on this uh, this is something i don't recommend if you're from a tier 3 college and uh, why i'll make another video on that um i think that's it yeah a um, lot of hard work went into it but it was all worth it and um, in the end it's all your hard work you know all the knowledge is out there on google the community is out there in open source so i think um, you can learn anything you know you what you want uh, all you need is good time management skills and uh, balance that somehow with college and um, yeah it's going to be tricky not saying it will be easy but good things don't come easy um if you try to have fun while learning i think um, i think that would make things easier a little bit so yeah that's pretty much about it no secret formula uh, i made this video because folks were asking for it many students who are looking for shortcuts would be disappointed 
but this is the truth that's how i did it and uh, that's pretty much about it thanks a lot for watching make sure you like share and subscribe share the links in the description below if you want to support the community and i'll uh, see you in the next one but if you have any questions leave the leave those in the comments i'll try to answer yeah thanks for watching have a great day Bye.